Gray, what's happening? Hey, how you doing, Mark? Fantastic. I'm trying to turn my video on. And I'm driving my car to get better reception because uh, we don't have reception at the farmhouse. Yeah. Uh, but I've got good 4G LTE out here on the road. Great. So, first of all, I do want to say that I really enjoyed the movie, especially the ending. Loved it. And uh, I also, by the way, was a huge fan of your yours and Mr. Taylor's last film as well, the 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 Ghost Rider film, which I thought was 10 times better than the first. So congratulations Thank you. on both of those. Okay. What was your artistic vision for the Vatican tapes? I wanted to do something different. Uh, I wanted to challenge myself. Lake Shore brought me this project, and I was actually kind of surprised. Um, it was possession film. It was different than anything I've, I've worked on in the past. Uh, it had a different pace, um, a different you know performance style. Uh, of course. And, um, so, so I, I, I decided to work with a DP that I used to work for, uh, about 12 years ago, Matteo Madrazzo. He's an amazing lighter, uh, and he loves shooting really rich cinematic shots. Uh, we talked about different color palettes and we wanted something like richer, deeper that felt like you could feel the gravity of the shots and the gravity of the characters and they would feel big and, and, um, but at the same time, I wanted this to be incredibly naturalistic. Uh, we had many conversations and I always said less supernatural, more naturalistic. Cause to me, this is a slice of life possession film. Uh, to me, what this really is, is an origin story that's camouflaged underneath a possession film. Cause ultimately that's, I, I think there's a bigger movie here and, and that's what I, you know, I want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I did get that as well. Um, now, the Vatican Tapes has an unconventional narrative jumping back and forth in time. How come you chose to tell the story in this way? Um, you know, it, it does at times, be, being that it's sort of bookended or framed that way. Uh, I wanted to sort of let people know what we're getting into and that this movie um, is bigger than just the, the, the small family and an Angela story that there's these undercurrents. So I thought framing it in that way would, would really make sense. Uh, originally this was actually a found footage movie. So we kind of reverse engineered it and moved it out of the found footage world and made it more of a cinematic experience. What uh, led to those decisions to change the format of the film? Lakeshore, uh, had wanted to, you know, um, move away from found footage at the time. I thought it would be an incredible challenge to, to try to do that and reverse engineer it, but uh, it worked out. You know, we we really uh, thought it through. And the main thing that you have to do when flipping it is you have to change the point of view. Uh, so it took some time to develop that. Uh, but by doing that, we found some other fun characters to to bring in and, and to give it this, you know, this the gravity of the Vatican and and the sub story, which I really believe is the, the bigger story in all this. Gotcha. Uh, throughout the film, the image of the raven plays a big part. Where did that idea come from? Well, we're trying to flip things on their head, you know. So the raven symbolizes uh, the unholy spirit. You know, we, we, we talk about the Holy Trinity and and there's Christ and Antichrist and the spirit and the unholy spirit and, and God and the devil. So to us, uh, you know, I just love that imagery, you know. I love the birds. I love, I, there's, there's a lot of movies that, uh, you know, at times will use Ravens. And I just thought it was a perfect uh, way to, to build off of that. How did you endeavor to make the exorcism in your film different from those that we've seen in other films? Well, I didn't, uh, I really was inspired by a lot of those films. And I think that Chris wrote a different film, uh, you know, in a lot of films, there's sort of in, in possession films, there tends to be a formula, whether it's, you know, the girl was playing with a Ouija board or, a, a, you know, a demonized pendant. But I liked that, you know, in this movie, Angela's sin was that she was human and the devil can choose anybody. That was really neat to me. And that was challenging. You know, how do you sort of drive this narrative ahead if she doesn't have some kind of supernatural sin. Well, I believe that, you know, with all the bad things going on in the world, there's something underneath this. There's something more to this world. Uh, and maybe something is coming. Uh, 
And that's what I was playing with, because that's the stuff that sort of scared me as a kid growing up in the Catholic Church and going to Catholic school. Uh, I tried to bring those elements and just the things that, you know, again, that 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 scared me. Those are the things that I brought to the table. And um, I love just being inspired by The Exorcist, which came out the year I was born in 1973. And, and I love I love possession films and horror films. So it's hard not to. Uh, you know, have those things bleed into your work when there's such a big part of your life. Yeah, yeah. Now, you have a great cast for this film, and specifically Angela, um, who is played by Olivia Taylor Dudley. She's been in a couple films recently, a lot in the horror genre and others. How did you find her and make that decision to cast her as your lead in this film? We we were ready to sign another girl on for the role, and, and the other girl would have been amazing. Uh, but a casting director came into my uh, office probably hours before we were going to sign the other girl. And she said, you have to see this, this, this last girl. Uh, she's incredible. And she's got a different take on this. Please come in the room. And I was like, I don't have time. I got to work on production design and we've got a camera test. And I'm so glad that I did <laughs> because within like 30 seconds, I knew I said, here's Angela. She's sitting right here in front of us. And when she, did the transformation part of the audition, her eyes literally changed. It was like she was turning into a wolf. And I saw her commitment uh, to wanting to feel the possession and take this on. And it's her commitment and sort of belief that this could happen to someone. I mean, her true belief that this could happen to someone that allowed her to go there and um, really put her out of her comfort zone. And she created an amazing character and gave us a brilliant performance. Yeah, I saw her in a film (laughs) earlier this year, uh, Dude Bro Party Massacre 3. Yes. <laughs> it's right. Great. Yeah. It's awesome. Um now uh some of the other actors, how did you how did you get such big name actors like Michael Peña and uh Yeah, Jaiman Hansu is a is a friend of mine. Uh I've known him probably since 2002. And we've always threatened each other that we're going to work with each other and uh we just thought that this was a great time. I needed somebody with real gravity because his character is not on screen throughout the whole movie. I knew I needed someone who, when he showed up, he was going to be powerful and we would feel that gravity of the Vatican. And he's, he's the right hand guy to Cardinal Brune, who is also uh, an amazing actor with, with massive gravity. That's Peter Anderson. Who's originally from the um, girl with the dragon tattoo movies, the original girl with the dragon tattoo movies. Yeah. Uh, and he's so good. Um, He's so layered in his performance and the moments where he sort of enjoys, you know, dragging Angela uh, through the exorcism is, is brilliant. Um, so so I, I, got, I got really lucky in, in you know, uh, getting some people on board. Lakeshore had a relationship with Michael Pena from, from their past films. Uh, they gave him uh, the script. He, he loved it. We met. We talked about it. And I was... I was over the moon. I was like, oh, you're going to do this movie, this, this little possession film. Okay. So suddenly we got, you know, Michael Pena and do Scott, uh, and, 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 you know, uh, Peter Anderson and uh, Olivia Teller Dudley. And it was like, wow, we we have like heavy hitters in this movie. So, um, and Kathleen Robertson is a psychiatrist is, is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I had the, uh, great pleasure to like learn from these guys. This is a different uh, performance, you know, tonally than I've than I've worked on in the past. So it was it was fun to sort of go back to my my stage days in New York City, where we really had to block out the scenes and really rehearse and get into the characters and and torture ourselves. You mean it's different from what you've dealt with recently, I guess, just because of the character element. Yeah, just the performances are different. It's a different type of performance. Um, you know, I love the the comic booky performances and the, and the, the ways the, that you know Brian and I worked, and and some of those performances are Oscar winning in in their own right. But it's just a different tone. It's a different yeah. shift. Um, we relied, you know, at times on uh, the comedy and the quick wittedness of the actors, whereas this movie is not about that. You know, it's about the story and the subtext. So. Um, it was just a challenge for me and, you know, uh, I I learned a lot from it. (laughs) Yeah. Now, uh, the end of this film is very effective. I love it. Uh, do you think there could be sequels to, uh, the Vatican tapes? We've certainly talked about sequels to the Vatican tapes. And again, it would be amazing because this is an origin story camouflaged underneath the possession film. And what 
part two would be, and this is a spoiler alert, so you can edit this any way you want, it would be Michael Pena and Jaiman Hansu hunting down the devil. And that would be the coolest thing, because I feel like we could move this into an action horror thriller. <laughs> Just like I like to always smash genres together, I think we pulled up with this, and I would love it to have, you know, if I could have Pena and Jaiman be the leads in my next movie, that'd be incredible. Yeah, yeah. Are you Are you thinking... Like, do you have several films already plotted out, or are you taking it step by step? Well, we go into the story of the Vatican and the secret archives, and what people don't know is that the secret archives at the Vatican in Rome, those are actually real. Secret meant something different, you know, a thousand years ago. It just meant more like the private uh, archives. But they do have uh, the secret archives at the Vatican that they just released to the public not, not too many years ago. Um, so we'd sort of dive into the backstory and how the Vatican has been tracking evil over the last 2,000 years. Um, and in the recent years, of course, you know, filming it and, and audio capture. Uh, and and we, would, we would sort of see how they would – uh, use this information to track uh, and hunt down and eradicate the devil and the Antichrist and the unholy spirit. That's really neat. So I just wanted to close by saying, again, I love the film, and uh, I, I see that you're kind of going a different way now. Uh, what other projects or what? where do you think you're going to go from here? I want to try other movies that challenge me. You know, I'm really excited to do Crank 3, but I'm also really excited – to do a movie that deals with a with a, a soldier and his military working dog and and PTSD and uh, I'm excited about working on a, a NASCAR film that I wrote uh, with a buddy of mine. Uh, so I'm I'm really kind of all over the place. I'm inspired by so many things. I, I'm I'm a lover of films. Uh, I'm, I'm not a good critic, so I just I like to do things that uh, that are fun to do and that are new. Well, we all appreciate your your efforts, and this is. One of your best films, so thank you for your, taking your time out uh, to speak with us today. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Take care. Thank you.